Hey guys and gals and welcome back to the channel. So today, we are going to be talking about my personal favorite Primarch, Sanguinius. Now Sanguinius is the Primarch of the 9th Legion. He's the great angel and he's the brightest one. Unfortunately, that's where the Wikipedia ends on nicknames, but hey, at least I did my research. <laughs> so how is this vid going to play out? So this is going to be pretty similar to my uh, Sigmar versus the Emperor video. It's going to be really informal and it's going to be a lore video. Uh, I'm going to talk about why he's my favorite. I'm going to talk about his birth, which is pretty much the same as every other Primarch. Uh, where he was taken to, his great deeds, and finally the close during the Horus Heresy. So let's just let's just jump right into it. But I can't say that. That's Phillips. That, that's Phillips. Hmm. I'll have to figure something out. So like the other 20 Primarchs, he was stolen by the Ruinous Powers. You know, the real dickwads in the warp. And he was taken to Baal Secundus, a.k.a. Angel's Fall. Now, Baal Secundus is a really shitty world. It's almost like a Necron world. Or a Necron tier world. Uh, I apologize. So, Baal Secundus is a desert planet that's irradiated to shit. Now, at first, the, the pure bloodlines of humanity who resided on Angel's Fall wanted to kill Sanguinius because of his angel's wings. Now these wings sprouted because of the uh, the ruinous powers of chaos and their touch and the gene flaw that they put inside of his genetic code. So a few of the purebloods decided to adopt Sanguinius and brought them back to their tribe. Now, unlike the bloods, of course he has wings, but he was also able to withstand the radiation that was present on the planet. Now... Also, like the other Primarchs, he was able to become the leader of his respective tribes. Now, the big problem that uh, Angel's Fall had was mutants, and these mutants were an endless horde constantly seeking to destroy the purebloods of humans that still lived on Angel's Fall. To summarize this up pretty quickly, of course Sanguinius became the leader of the Bloods, and blah 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 blah, the Emperor shows up after he really fucks some shit up on that planet. I mean, he kills a shit ton of mutants. When he was a baby, tiny little wee lad in angel diapers, he killed a desert scorpion. That's pretty dope if you ask me. Now, during a rallying speech Sanguinius is giving to his people, the Emperor is doing a little sneaking around. He's hiding in the crowd. But Sanguinius instantly recognizes his father due to another genetic flaw, but not really a flaw. It's more of a psychic premonition. He can see the future in small visions. This allows him to see his father even before he makes planet side and lets it be known that he's the emperor of mankind. Now, later on, this will play a, a big part in Sanguinius' death, but we'll get to that in a bit. Anyway, of course, you know, Sanguinius and his dad have a hug moment. They they love each other, so on and so forth. I mean, obviously, this is the Emperor's favorite son. If you haven't seen the text-to-speech series, really nails it right there. Anyway, Sanguinius decides to take his mantle as a Primarch of the Ninth Legion from here. He brings along his best warriors, and they join the Great Crusade. Uh, the warriors that he brings along are obviously going to become uh, Space Marines in his chapter. So, the Blood Angels have a lot of history. Way too much for a quick daily lore vid. I want to cover a lot of it, but I'm just going to give a primarily quick overview of the uh, Primarch. So, we'll got to keep this quick. When it comes to the other Primarchs, his brother Primarchs, he's overall loved by all of them. I mean, he's respected by the Imperium, and he's easily one with the Emperor's end goal, bringing humanity back to its rightful place. He was one of the best warriors, he was charismatic, he was obviously beautiful. I mean, good lord, have you seen those angel wings? And when it really came down to it, Angron was probably the only one who could beat him in melee combat. Now, I know what you're saying. If you know his lore, you know Horus beat him. Well, Horus is a little bitch, and he was chaotically enhanced, so that doesn't count. Sanguinius is such a badass during the 30k bad times that Horus has to send him away. While it was probably because he needed to keep the Loyalist chapter separated, I believe it was because Horus truly loved his brother and tried to send him to the safest place possible. Just kidding, he sent him to the Cygnus Cluster, which was an absolute chaos fuckfest. Unbeknownst to Sanguinius, Horus had already been corrupted by the powers of chaos, and due to Horus fearing his brother Primarch, he decided to lay a trap in this cluster. Now, the cluster itself was already completely under the rule of two greater demons. The greater demon, one of them anyway, was known. Did you just meow? 
Really? You just fucked up my, my, my audio. You bitch! Sorry guys, I was going for a really deep and dark mood, but my, uh, my cat decided to meow. Anyway, this greater demon was known as Chris. Yes, he couldn't think of a better name, but hey, Chaos is pretty lame anyway. So, uh, as soon as the Blood Angels arrive, they are essentially being slaughtered on these planets. I mean, it's absolutely insane what's going on. This complete surprise attack decimates a good chunk of the chapter. And during the battle, the evil Chris summons, or doesn't really summon, but is assisted by a blood letter of corn known as Kabanda. Which, that's a, that's, a, that's a way cooler name. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, but that's a way cooler name. So, fucking get your shit together, Chris. Now, Kabandha, Kaban, Kabandha, really royally beats the holiness out of Sanguinius, knocking him unconscious and breaking his legs. Uh, unfortunately, he's one of those cliche villains that lets everyone know their master plan. So, this is when Sanguinius kind of learns of Horus' treachery. This is obviously before he gets knocked out, so don't fucking get in the comments and be a little dickhole. It's also at this point that the genetic flaw of the Blood Angels becomes known to the Legion. The Black Rage sends the Blood Angels into overdrive kill mode, literally becoming unstoppable bloodthirsters until finally they drop from exhaustion or snap back into sanity. The Blood Angels go so full hand they are able to turn the tide on Cygnus Prime to their favor, even saving the Primarch from Kabanhai, the Bloodthirster of Corn. Man, I, that name, I am not pronouncing that right. Anyway, once Sanguinius was healed of his wounds, he properly sends Kabandhai back home to the warp. Now Chris, knowing he's royally fucked, decides to try and confront Sanguinius and to uh, turn him to the uh, side of chaos. But he ain't about that chaos life, so then Sanguinius decapitates his ass. So to cover a lot of ground quickly, eventually they leave the sector and land in the Ultramar sector and meet up with the Ultramarines. This is mainly due to the Ruin Storm that is created by the Ward Bearers, which makes travel through the warp absolutely fucking ridiculous. Rabute Gilliman and Sanguinius form the Imperium Secundus, mainly meant to secure the Imperium and the legacy of the Emperor because at this point they think their father is dead. Eventually the Dark Angels and Lionel Johnson finds a guiding beacon that also led the Blood Angels to Ultramar. With these three legions united and some uh, brotherly drama we won't cover in this vid taken care of, they finally head to the climatic close of the Horus Heresy. Now the Blood Angels are the first to arrive outside of the warp, being one of the few legions to actually make it to defend the Emperor during the Battle of Terra. The Blood Angels alongside with the Legio Custodes defend the Imperial Palace, while the Emperor is stuck on the Golden Throne preventing the demons from accessing the human webway into the heart of the palace and on Earth, or excuse me, Terra. Sanguinius' proudest moment comes when he finally gets a rematch with Kabandhai, you know, the guy who broke his legs. He goes mano y mano. These two legendary warriors spar in front of the Interinity Gate, the giant doorway into the Emperor's throne room. Kabandhai was once again devastating Sanguinius in melee combat, but the great angel, the brightest one, had finally taken enough shits from this overgrown period monster. With his final vestige of might, he flew high into the sky, dragging the demon with him. Taking a page out of Bane and his brother Lehman Russ's book, Sanguinius smashed the demon across his knee, shattering the back and then closing the door to the human webway. While this victory was massive for the defending loyalist chapters, it was short one. Horus knew he didn't have much time left. The Ultramarines, Dark Angels, and Space Wolves would soon arrive in the Sol system, and they would straight up crush the traitor legions. Horus, however, took a gamble and lowered his void shields, allowing the defenders to transport on his ship. However, Sanguinius knew this moment was coming, thanks to his pre-mentioned gift of uh, premonition. Sanguinius was first on the flagship known as a Vengeful Spirit. Weakened as he was, Sanguinius still arrived before his straighter brother. Horus desperately would try to turn his brother one last time. He didn't want to kill his brother. This was something that he was trying to do to save the Imperium. But, uh, that's not really how it went. Sanguinius ain't no bitch, and he's not gonna fall to chaos. He faced death smiling and is held head high. Thus, the battle commenced. Horus, infused with the powers of chaos, assailed our favorite Golden Sun, striking and taking advantage of the already weakened Primarch, his wounds becoming greater and greater. Sanguinius was still able to fight against his brother, and was able to lay a crucial blow in the War Master's armor chinking it and creating the one weakness that would allow his great father to kill Horus. Unfortunately, this is where Sanguinius' official story comes to an end, Horus striking down his brother, killing the Primarch of the Ninth Legion. 
The psychic backlash was so massive that since all the blood angels into full on black rage mode, forever leaving the gene fall and all of the remaining marines, you have no idea how hard that is to say. The blood angels viciously tore into the demon hordes, slaughtering and pushing them back as if they were all greater demons of corn. Up above them in the vengeful spirit, the battle between the Emperor of Mankind and the War Master would commence, bringing an end to the Horus heresy. While there is some theories and possibly a return of Sanguinius in the lore, it wouldn't be appropriate to cover them here since it's not the official lore. And uh, really, Sanguinius has a lot more stories, it's just, they really add to why I love him so much. He's such a badass, and he's without a doubt my favorite Primarch, and while I would love to go more in depth, this is just a quick daily lore vid, it's just something that I wanted to get out for you guys. There is just too much ground to cover in one of these types of videos. I would like to get a full list of the accomplishments of the Blood Angels and Sanguinius, but that's for way later when I have more time. Uh, anyway, thank you so much for watching. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. And as always, I love you. But not really.